When we started agriculture some 10,000 years ago and started tilling the land, uh, what was required of us is that um, if we're going to do this, we've either got to ignore nature uh, or subdue it. And so we've done both, depending. Because you simplify your landscape in order to get what you want. So we've had 10,000 years of that mind at work on the landscape. Agriculture for the last 10,000 years has got worse and worse and worse. The first producing oil well in the United States was 1859 in Titusville, Pennsylvania. 1859 was also the year that The Origin of the Species was published. And if you think about that, positioning those two things, we decided to go with oil instead of ecology. <laughs> I mean, it was just too seductive for us not to go down that path. But if you think about it, if we had gone down the path of saying it's really understanding nature and how nature functions and figuring out how we fit into the ecology of nature and how we can improve our quality of life by becoming plain members and citizens, as Aldo Leopold argued, we'd have a very different kind of world now. Uh, but we didn't. The planet will last longer than us. That's not a problem. I mean, you know, I mean, like uh, people say, I mean, you, you know, the planet doesn't need human beings, but the human being needs a planet. To me, agriculture as an industrial activity is not necessarily threatening. We have many aspects of our society that are related to industrial activities, and the ability of agriculture to capture sunlight and turn it into usable products seems to me a very laudable thing. The real question is, how can we translate that into viable rural communities? that uh, increase in vitality over time, that increase in terms of the quality of life, and how do we make all that kind of production system related stuff compatible with environmental quality, water, air, soil. Nature can correct herself, but a lot of times it's gonna take years. Of course it took us a short time to destroy it. The collapse of soil as the basic resource has led to decline of societies for the last 12,000 years. We've got to work out some way of producing clean, nutritious, high quality food while enhancing the environment, regenerating it, not sustaining it. We got a hell of a piece of work on our hands here. And as far as I'm concerned, we haven't got a minute to lose. We got to get going. There are agricultural policies in this country that actually preclude sensible management, let alone ecologically sound management. We live in the most ecologically illiterate civilization that has ever existed. Of a country that used to be the Jeffersonian dream about the importance of agrarian uh, culture and that kind of thing, that we went to this tremendous cheap food policy. We want those raw materials uh, from the food that they produce as cheaply as possible. You know, we talk about having a cheap food policy. We do not have a cheap food policy. We have a very expensive food policy. What we do have is a cheap labor and cheap raw materials policy, and that's a very different thing. People just don't understand um, that whole system, and they're not being educated. When a culture worships at the altar of fatter, bigger, faster, cheaper, that, that food system mantra will express itself in the population. The biggest problem, in terms of my interests, it's this lack of an explicit link between agriculture and human health. Now, there we are out there on that pendulum looking back down at the middle and saying, uh-oh, but this, look, look what we left behind. Look what we sort of ignored for a while. And even kind of unlearned is our connection to a healthy nature and a healthy environment. That's the consequences of what we did to get cheap food. If you look at sustainable agriculture, organic agriculture, as it's being defined today, it is the same agriculture that destroyed many civilizations through environmental degradation. So we need to go deeper. That's what I keep telling people. How about building an agriculture based on the way nature's ecosystems work? And as we know, essentially all of nature's ecosystems feature perennials in mixtures. Let's move, move away from the notion of agriculture, which is a destructive um, 
exercise to one that's actually a regenerative exercise, which is what we might call permaculture. So something that's permanent, that gets better year after year. We have now something to say about the whole of the future of agriculture, not just organic food and farming. Organic isn't the end of the road. He said, well, then why would I buy organic? I said, you're buying organic because you're supporting a method of farming that'll get better as it gets older. It's about deeper values which connect the way we farm the soil to our health and the health of the planet. You know, it really comes down to, you know, food is sacred. I think all peoples understood that to a large extent in history. Uh, but we've really kind of forgotten that. Now, how quick can we turn around our practices and preserve the soil and the soil biota that we have left so we have a sustainable system for the long term? What have we handed our children? How much of a miserable failure of a society have we been? And how fast do we have to change if we want to stay here? What is the story you believe in? What is the creation myth that holds power for you? Is the planet a community or a commodity? What's that story? And can you restory your connection to place and implement it pragmatically to get to restoration. And that's, a, that's an interesting conundrum for the future. We need each other. We need big agriculture and small agriculture, and we've got to work out how we sustain civilizations. If we don't, the future is grim indeed.